After understanding the difference between microeconomic and macroeconomic, let's see what are the studies that we need to do in microeconomic. What are the concepts, economic concepts that are related to microeconomics? Product pricing. Now, pricing of a product is a microeconomic concept. Why? Because it is related to a company. A company has to decide what should be the price of its product. It is thus a microeconomic concept. Whatever is related to a company, a firm, an industry, an individual, or a family is a microeconomic concept. Next, consumer behavior. Again, we see behavior of a consumer that is behavior of an individual how does he behave when the prices go up does he demand more when the prices fall does he demand less so how does he behave this is the microeconomic concept because it is related only with an individual factor pricing what are the factors of production there are four factors of production land labor capital and enterprise now each of these factors of production have a pricing have a cost attached to them we buy we purchase land it doesn't come free of cost to us we employ labor for production again they charge us wages and salaries we borrow capital for starting up an enterprise again we pay interest for it and we take risk for starting an enterprise that is profit is the return or price attached to it all the factors of production have price attached to it these factors of production are related to a company a firm and industry so we study them in microeconomics economic condition of a family again we are related again we are studying the economic condition of a single family family is a microeconomic concept study of a firm single unit location of industry where do we locate an industry where do we build an industry do we build it in maharashtra or we build it in delhi so when we think of building a factory building a company it is a microeconomic concept because it is related to a single individual particular unit let's see what microeconomic deals with national income income of the whole nation when we add the income of all individuals it gives us the aggregate income of the nation that we call national income likewise national output that is the total national product total number of goods and services produced in a country we call national output general price level this is general price level this is not the pricing of a particular product but it is the general price level prevailing in a country that is the inflation level that is the cost index level what is the level of wholesale products in a country it is the combined price of all the products in a country balance of trade and balance of payments balance of trade is the striking of balance between imports and exports if we have more imports than export we have deficit but if the exports are more we have a surplus a company a country would always try to strike a balance between its imports and exports external value of money now the value of money 
in terms of other countries currency in terms of other other countries currency the value of rupee is different when we compare it with dollar the value of rupee is different for a pound the value of rupee is different for a taka so what is the value of a currency of a nation in relation to the currency of other countries again it is a macro economic concept because it deals with the value of the currency of a whole nation against the value of currencies of other nations national national savings and investments national again a macro economic concept we are not studying a particular on it or an individual unit here but we are studying the savings and investments of the whole nation the savings that the people of the nation have done in the banks in the stock market or in other capital markets and how the money from these uh, saving channels have been mo mobilized to the investment section have they been invested in the infrastructure have they been invested for healthcare or other departments so this is also a national concept so a macroeconomic concept to get the concept more clear we take an example of mcdonalds if we look at the production if we are studying microeconomics we'll ask how many burgers does mcdonalds produce a single point microeconomics but if we go to macroeconomics we ask how many goods does india produce here we are studying the production of a firm here we are studying the production of a nation in terms of prices we we'll ask what is the price of a mcdonald's burger again we are related with the price of a single firm in macroeconomics we we'll ask what is the price of all the consumer goods in the economy in the economy we we'll add all the prices of all the consumer goods in 10 and then take aggregate of all the consumer goods so a macroeconomic concept in terms of income what are the wages of the workers at mcdonalds now again we are concerned with the wages of workers at mcdonalds a single firm a particular unit macro microeconomics what are the total wages and salaries of workers in the economy again we are concerned with the total wages and salaries in the nation employment how many workers are employed at mcdonald micro what are the total number of workers in an economy macro concept so this is how we differentiate between micro economics and macro economics micro deals with an individual a family a firm an industry but macro on the other hand deals with the aggregates maybe of a nation or of the world at large